that is a go-to-market strategy. So there's so much more that goes to it beyond just like, oh, the product at the beginning, it's a free experience. But uh, when you look beyond it, underneath the hood, it is the whole organization. It's a different way to sell. It's a different way to market, different way to do success and so many other things. So I'm happy to, to bust the myths. Um, whereas the products like Canva, Slack, uh, Calendly that were just mentioned and your favorite products, um, one thing they all have in common is they're really easy to use. Their time to value is super quick. And many times you can use the product and get value out of it without ever paying for it. And when you do usually become ready to make that purchasing decision, you hit some sort of limit within the product where you're like, okay, like for Canva's example, I want access to all those cool images so I can make better graphics. The trickiest part, and this is gonna lead to the challenge, uh, is really to think about what do I give away for free? And this is where a lot of people get stuck. Uh, the goal for your product is not to eliminate your users' problems. It's to upgrade them. I think it varies. If it's more sales, then it's, you know, pointing at marketing and, you know, we're not getting the support for marketing that we need. And if it's marketing, it's sales is not converting on the the efforts and the campaigns that we're, that we're producing. Should I have a free trial? Should I have a Freeman model? Should it be like some sort of combo here? That doesn't matter. It's bull crap. <laughs> Just focus on what are the beginner problems and how can we solve them? So um, that's the, the challenge. Now, I will be here and, and tell you that there is many product-led companies without sales. Um, absolutely. 100% true. There's a ton of bootstrappers who just have product-led businesses that are doing, you know, a few million a year and they have nobody in sales. Should I put sales into the mix? When should I put sales? Is, is sales adding value or friction? And if the answer is friction, I have to say sales is optional. Um, and if it's adding value, you, you don't get rid of that. You know, sales is pointing at marketing saying they're the reason why things are not necessarily progressing well and the vice versa, right? And I made this joke with Justin um, in the beginning of our hypercycle conversations that uh, the Dan Aykroyd movie Trading Places uh, with Eddie Murphy, uh, if sales and marketing could trade places, they would understand the impact and the challenges that they have. And so the first step is, okay, we recognize that there's a siloed approach to our go-to-market strategy. Um, so really put on that solution hat and come up with what would that look like if you could take your user uh, from that starting point to somewhere where they get to that beginner milestone super quick. We, I will be your Morpheus and you are the one, you are the Neo and we'll take you through that journey. Um, and from a technical perspective is tagging the website to actually show Right, the proofs in the put pudding, showing the actual traffic that you can get from demand basis solution. Throughout this whole process, all I'm doing is talking about existing clients and the impact that they've seen and mirroring and say, hey, when I when I was reaching out to this CMO, they had just came off of an emerging acquisition and you know they were dealing with disjointed systems and just telling the story. And so my point is is product-led growth is really just mirroring back to net new clients, the success stories, uh, and where they the journey for clients that are potentially evaluating you as a solution. So those are my two cents there and um, just love this whole exercise. So I appreciate it. All right, so the winner is the person who can do the most in the next seven days to push this forward. <laughs> Done. So the challenge is between, it's always execution.